Chapter 4 A Cold, Dark Night I wanted to be far away from this cold, dark place. I wanted to be at home, Paxton stopped. That's my story, he said. Do you believe me? I didn't believe it, but I didn't say that to Paxton. You believe it, I answered, and that's the important thing. But then I remembered the shadow near the door to our hotel room, what can I do now? Paxton asked. I looked at Long, then at Paxton. Okay, I said. We're going to help you. We're going to come with you and put the crown back in its place under the ground. Let's go. Paxton smiled, but it wasn't a very happy smile. Thank you, thank you, he said. He went to his room. I looked at the window. It was a dark night. Long and I put on our coats and went to the hotel door. Paxton was there in front of the hotel. He had the black bag and the spade in his hands. It was cold and we walked, quickly. We walked near the church. I put my head down and didn't, look up. I didn't want to see the, gravestone of William Agers, that night, are we near the place, Long asked. My friend Henry, Long likes walking, but he doesn't, usually walk very quickly, yes, Paxton answered. Suddenly, I looked left. What's that? I said. What did you see? Long asked. There's a man. He's watching us, from those trees. I know it. We looked and looked at the trees. There wasn't a man there now. But I was afraid. What did I see? Was it Paxton's shadow? Perhaps, his story wasn't wrong. I didn't, like this. Let's be quick, Paxton said. The shadow knows, about us. He's watching us. We arrived at the hill. Paxton didn't, wait. He started to work with, the spade. Long and I only watched. Can I help now? I said to Paxton, but he didn't stop. This is my job, he said. Then he said to us, give it to me. We put the bag on the ground near him, but we didn't open it. Paxton did that. I looked at the crown for the last time in Paxton's hands. He finished the job quickly. Is it in the ground? I asked him. Yes. I smiled, but Paxton didn't smile, let's go back to the hotel, Long said. It's very late and our beds are waiting for us. We started to walk down the hill. Suddenly Long said, remember your coat, Paxton. It's up on the hill. I looked up the hill behind us. Long was right. Paxton's long, dark coat was there on the ground. But our new friend didn't move. What's wrong, Paxton? I asked. His face was white. His mouth moved but he didn't talk. Are you okay? Long asked. I. I didn't bring my coat, Paxton said. It's in my hotel room. The dark thing on the hill wasn't his coat. But what was it? I looked again. It wasn't there now. 
We went down the hill very quickly. We didn't talk. We only listened to the noise of the sea. Sometimes I looked behind us. Was that a shadow behind the trees? Did a shadow move in the church garden? Was there a dark shadow behind the gravestones? I didn't know, and I didn't want to know. I wanted to be in my bed. No, I wanted to be far away from this cold, dark place. I wanted to be at home. We arrived at the hotel at twelve o'clock. A hotel worker opened the door for us. He looked at the three of us, it's a cold night. He said. I was afraid, but I smiled. Yes, it is. The hotel worker looked up the road behind us. Did you meet any people on the road? He asked. No, Paxton said. We were the only people in Seaburg. But there was a man behind you. The hotel worker said. Paxton looked back into the night with big eyes. The shadow wasn't there now. The three of us went to our room. Paxton went to the window. It's okay now, I said to him. The crown is in its place again. You're not in danger now, Paxton's eyes stayed on the night. Perhaps, he said. He went to the door. He said, thank you to Long and me, and then he went to his room. Good night, I said. Sleep well. Chapter 5 A long run on the beach, all long and I started to run. It was difficult on the beach, but we didn't stop, I don't know about Paxton, but sleep didn't come to me for a long time that night. And then I didn't sleep well. It was a long, long night. I opened my eyes in the morning and went to the window. The sun's light came into the bedroom. It was late. I looked at the trees. It was a beautiful April day. I washed and went down. Long was in a big chair with his newspaper and some coffee. Do you want some food? he asked. Yes. A man was at our table. It was Paxton. How are you today? Long asked. I'm. Okay, our friend answered. Did you sleep well? I asked. Yes. Thank you. I didn't see them. He stopped. There wasn't a problem all night. Good. I smiled. Long and I are going for a walk this morning. Please come with us. No, thank you, Paxton answered. I want to stay in the hotel this morning. I'm going to write some letters. This afternoon. Long said. Yes, thank you. Good, good. Let's meet at three o'clock, Long said. Come to our room. We said goodbye to him. Long and I had a good morning. Then we had some food in a cafe in a town near Seaburg. I like this, Long said. We can have a good holiday again. It's 2.30, I said. We're meeting Paxton at the hotel at three o'clock. Paxton was at the hotel. He had a book in his hands and there was a smile on his face. Did you have a good morning, Paxton? I asked. 
Yes, thank you, he said. I did. Long and I wanted to wash. Paxton waited for us. I went down again quickly, but Paxton wasn't there. Only his book was on the chair. Long came down, too. Where's Paxton? he asked. I don't know, I said. Perhaps he's in his room. But there was no answer at Paxton's door. We looked in the hotel garden but Paxton wasn't there. I was a little afraid now. A hotel worker came to us. You're here, she said. Yes, I answered. Why did you say that? Mr. Paxton isn't here, she said. He wanted to see you and Mr. Long. You were in front of the hotel. You shouted to him. He said, we didn't shout to him. We were in our room. We didn't shout to Paxton. Who did? I was very afraid now. Paxton. I said. He's in danger. In front of the hotel, we looked for our friend. I can't see him. I shouted. The hotel worker was at the door behind us. He went to the beach, she said. He wanted to see you and Mr. Long, thank you. Long and I started to run. It was difficult on the beach, but we didn't stop. There. I can see him, Long said. There was a person on the beach, but he was far away. We shouted again and again. Paxton. Come back. Paxton. We're here. But there was a lot of noise from the wind and the sea. Paxton didn't hear us. What what's he doing? I don't know. I can't see from here. Look at this, Long. I shouted. There were footprints on the beach from Paxton's shoes. And look at this. This was a footprint, too. But it wasn't Paxton's. But what's wrong with it? Long asked. This person didn't have shoes, I said. Was it a person? Long said. Perhaps it was an animal. The footprint was very thin. I didn't answer. A name came into my head, William Agers. But William Agers was dead. Quick. I shouted. We started to run again. Where was Paxton now? Chapter 6, The Dead Man by the Sea. I don't remember my time at the police station very well. Only questions, questions, questions. We arrived at a tall old building on the beach. Long and I started to go up it. Where is he? I asked Long Long opened his mouth but he didn't answer. There wasn't time. Suddenly there was a noise. It was a person. A shout. But where did it come from? Who's that? I shouted. We looked down. No. I shouted. There was a man on the ground. It was our friend Paxton. He didn't move. His dead eyes looked up at us. I looked at the dark sea. Paxton was right, I said. He did it. Who? Long asked. 
I don't understand. Agers protected the crown. He was dead, but he protected the crown. But how? Long said. I had an answer, but I didn't want to say it. It was magic. Paxton wanted to find us. He went to the old building. He started to run. Suddenly the shadow was there. But now it wasn't only a shadow. It was William Agers and he was angry. Paxton looked into those cold, dead eyes. And now Paxton was dead, too. What now? I asked. There's a police station in town, Long said. We walked back on the beach. The footprints weren't there now. They were under the cold waters of the sea. I don't remember my time at the police station very well. Only questions, questions, questions. Why were you on the beach? Who was there? How did you know Paxton? What did you see? Long and I answered all of them. Yes, there was a man on the beach with Paxton. No, we didn't know him. He was very far away. Long and I had the same story, and the police believed us. But we didn't talk to them about the crown, or about William Agers. Long and I went away from Seaburg. That was my last visit there. I'm never going to go to Seaburg again. And that's my story. You don't believe me. That's okay I understand. Before this, I didn't believe stories about magic and dead people. But listen to this, please. Don't go to the small town of Seaburg. The little church near the sea is beautiful, but don't go near it. Don't walk up the hill near the sea and don't look for the last crown. Why? Because a person in Seaburg is watching and waiting. He's dead, but that doesn't stop him. He has a job. The crown protects England, and he protects the crown, he is always going to protect the crown. And me? I'm at home again. I see my friend Long sometimes, but we never talk about our holiday in Seaburg. I do my job every day and I'm happy. But at night I don't sleep very well. In my bedroom, in the dark, I close my eyes and listen to the wind. I see a cold, dark sea. And under a hill the last crown sits and waits.